Welcome to this edition of Discover with FHC Publications. This special episode, we were able to get an interview with Superintendent Dr. Pam Sloan. Here's Tyler Tran with the scoop. Hi, my name is uh, Tyler Tran and I'm with the Francis Howell Center of Publications. Today we're here with Dr. Pam Sloan. Dr. Pam Sloan, how are you? Good. So today you're the head of one of the top, the top performing school districts in Missouri. You oversee about 22,000 kids, around 2,000 teachers. What exactly does your job entail? I think, it, you know, I often tell people being a superintendent is a little bit like being on principal, on, like being a principal on steroids. It's just a little bit bigger and the balls that could fall to the ground are glass now and they don't bounce very much. If something falls, it, it, you know, it has a little bit of a reverberation. So, you know, where are we going academically? How are we going to pay for it? What kind of human resources are we going to put in, the, in, in our school buildings to work with our kids? What kind of technology are we going to have? So I have an executive leadership team that I work with. We work very closely. We meet quite frequently to have those kinds of strategic discussions. So uh, right now the state just isn't exactly coming through with funding. You're having some problems with uh, property tax, things like that. How is the district adapting to the circumstances? We're going to try to maintain 15% balances, so that is our goal, to keep enough balances uh, so that we can cash flow the district at the end of the year before the new property tax comes in. So our uh, current ad adaptation is that we're going to reduce our staff by $4.2 million, and we're going to reduce our other expenditures by $4 million. So we are in the process of getting staffing set for next year. We've made the uh, cuts if you will, and the $4 million that we're going to uh, reduce in the other areas, we're in the process of going through that right now with our buildings and the district level budget. You're sort of the uh, face of the district, kind of like how the president is sort of the face of our country. You also seem to have a very strong uh, social media presence, namely Twitter. What do you think of some of the tweets that these kids send to you? I, I will say that, you know, if you ever need to enhance your um, Twitter number and your number of followers just be in charge of snow days because you can you can get hundreds of followers very quickly. Getting involved with something like Twitter is a scary proposition for, for a superintendent uh, because you're out there and you're out there by yourself and you are the face of the district and a lot of things could could potentially go wrong. I like to stay connected to the students and what's going on and what are people saying saying and um, to share. I think people get, can get to know me a little bit better through Twitter. So the snow day thing has kind of taken a life of its own and I understand that. We actually um, have a couple of tweets actually yeah. kind of coming out. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, this one of you. Mm -hmm. You are photoshopped on the face of Elsa from yeah. Frozen. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you saw uh, this one, let's see, this one, this could, this could be us, but you playing <laughs> right. Dr. Sloan, yeah, I mean like some of the, I mean 248 favorites, I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, human, it's what we do, yeah. and so those things are pretty yeah. innocuous and I think they're funny and they're, they give me a good laugh. You came across the professional learning community uh, at work, education improvement model for use at Howe. Can you tell me a little more about that model? Sure. So I was able to attend a, a conference about professional learning communities. It was kind of an aha moment for me uh, and with the people that we were with was like, my gosh, this is what we've been searching for. I didn't even know it had a name. They focus on four basic questions in their professional learning communities. Uh, what do we want our kids to know? How will we know if they learned it? What are we going to do if they haven't learned it? And what are we going to do if they have learned it? So those are really the, that's the foundation of a professional learning community. A lot of other uh, work goes into being a true professional learning community, but that, those are the basic um, tenets of the conversations that should be being had every week. So the transformation that we've been working on for over a decade now, that we are, we've transformed a lot of our work and, and certainly headed in a, in a different and probably more clear direction. But we have gone, uh, from hundreds of dropouts down to our principals know the names of the kids who are likely to, to drop out. So we lose very few kids. What is your vision for the district and how are you making that a reality? My responsibility as a superintendent is to make sure that all of you who go through our system at the end are well prepared to compete with any, any student whether you're going to North Carolina or whether you're going to study in China, that you have the ability to be able to compete with them. 
And I think it's important for our kids to have those same opportunities so that they can go and do and be all that they can be as well. So my final question is, what do you think is the key to unlocking the education of tomorrow? Well, we're only going to improve as an educational system commensurate to the amount of time that we allow our teachers to be able to have conversations with one another. And that's, that's the game right there. Because the teachers hold the answers to <clears throat> transforming the classroom instruction model that's delivered to our, to our students. They have that ability to be able to do that. But if you're only going to give them 50 minutes a week to work in a professional learning community, that is the amount of change or progress that you're going to be able to make. We've moved some of that down, some of that rigorous uh, work down to our middle schools going in. You can go to first and second grade now, and the writing that those students can do in first and second grade, it's amazing. So for us to be what we can be futuristically as, a, as, an, as an educational system really lies in our, the ability of our teachers to be able to have time to do some of the transformation and to be able to do some of the problem solving that needs to be done. I think at the end of the day, what we really have to do is to be able to teach our students how to be problem solvers, because you're right, the jobs that, especially our lower grade kids, students will have, haven't been created. We don't even know what those look like today, but to be able to have the skill set to adapt to what those jobs of the future might be, um, to be able to collaborate, to be able to think critically, problem solve, those are the things that you want your kids to be able to leave with today. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Sloan. Thank you. If you'd like to see the full video, click on the link above. Thank you for watching this edition of Discover. If you'd like to see more exciting videos, go to our website at fhctoday.com.